Hello. Um, today I have a, another video um, to sort of give an update of sorts of what some of the stuff I've gotten uh, in the last uh, month or so uh, since, well, the last time I uh, made a video of some sort of uh, Blu-ray up thing. So um, I mentioned last week how I ordered planes, trains, and automobiles, 4K with the Blu-ray disc, uh, with deleted scenes, basically, that's what they were, uh, on the normal Blu-ray disc, um, you know, at the time, it didn't get here, um, of course, you know, it was obvious from, uh, the UK, I live in the US, you know, America, so it took like a month <laughs> to get here, but, um, Having pre-ordered it, I don't know, I would have thought that they would have uh, been able to have, uh, you know, uh, launch, like, the pre-orders or something of the sort a little uh, later, or a little, uh, a little before the normal people who have, like, the people who might have been able to ordered it within the limited time from the moment it actually released because <clears throat> usually it seems like those uh, sell out pretty quickly um, but I uh, so yeah here is uh, the normal blu-ray that I got that I've had for some years now and uh, here is the 4k with the blu-ray um with uh, deleted scenes um i made sure it works in my uh normal blu-ray player or, or like playstation and such and it does work you know it is a multi-region disc which is good i know 4k discs um 4k blu-rays are pretty much uh basically region free and you never have to worry about them working wherever you are in the world but for blu-ray discs normal blu-ray discs and also dvds if you're not within the region that this the said disc was made or you don't have a region free player you can't play them but um this disc is a uh, region free which is nice and um No real complaints. Um, so yeah, I know there have been people complaining about the overall 4K quality, that it isn't the best, and how, you know, Paramount doesn't seem to be the absolute best company when it comes to doing any kind of 4K transfers, like other companies are better. I don't know why that is, but at the end of it all, I wanted at least the Blu-ray on here uh, to then watch the d deleted scenes and they are in uh, you know VHS quality because they transfer them off of VHS tape and all the uh, deleted scenes on there are pretty funny um, of course it has the one deleted scene that's in good quality that's on MISC the only deleted scene that existed for years on any sort of like special edition DVD and then the Blu-ray. Um, so that's really cool though that I was able to get this and that it does work and I don't have to try and hack my player or anything because you know my luck is I would do everything step by step and it, at the end of the day it just wouldn't work for uh, whatever reason I might have done something wrong even though it's like I followed everything the way it's supposed to, and yet at the end of it all, yeah, it just didn't work. Um, and I don't know if 4K Blu-ray players are actually makes all the other DVDs or uh, DVDs region-free. Like, you can play any of them, whatever. I don't think that is the case necessarily, but I don't know. From what I've heard, that doesn't seem to be the case, but I could be wrong. 
So if I am, there you go. So I got that. And I got uh, the 20th anniversary of 8 Mile, the steel book. Um, I didn't, I got this from Groove.com. I didn't get that from Zavi, even though the one from Zavi kind of looked really cooler. Or, you know, it had like a, like, it looked like it had like the same steel book, like this. Um, but without this, and then it has like a thing that you could put in, put that in, and um, it has like a booklet of production notes and some cards and other stuff. Um, but all the extras and everything are all the same. Um, I don't know, uh, you know, knowing now that I would have to wait some weeks if I was able to, if I believe at the time I, rec I recorded this, I, unless it was, they haven't uh, updated it, uh, the site. Uh, I still think they have some, but I don't know. But considering all the extras and everything are all the same as such as this, I wasn't sure about buying that one. And plus, it was more expensive, so I thought, I don't know, I'll just get this. And maybe if some were down the line, if they still have it, like maybe within later in the month or whatever, maybe if it's at a reasonable price. See about getting that, and then I can just perhaps give this to somebody else I know um, who likes 8 Mile. I know some people who do, so. Um, the only uh, uh, downside to this is also something I will want to mention. Like, you know, DVD has all the same extras, you know, rap battles and uh, uncensored Superman music video, along with the making of. 8 Mile, um, but this has like his personal insight on the making of the film as well as the music of 8 Mile. Um, I haven't watched the normal DVD in so many years ever since I've gotten the Blu-ray of it. Um, um, but this has the making of 8 Mile, rap battles, and uh, Superman video, as does this. So basically, if you have this, or, or if you have this, yeah, or you got another one like this, you pretty much have all the extras, though I can't recall offhand if what's on the DVD, if it says, like, you know, the music of 8 Mile and the M&M's Inside. I think that's all the same thing. Uh, but basically, they just, for some reason, just split that into two or whatever, or maybe... I don't know, it's been a while since I've actually watched some of the extras on it, so do not quote me on all that, but um, yeah. Regardless, um, I'm a little disappointed they don't have any kind of new like interviews with Eminem or any of the cast and crew. I know Curtis Hansen has passed away, unfortunately. Brittany Murphy has passed away also, and um, some other... I mean, also in their... In their his little group uh, friends also passed on as well, unfortunately. Um, his name is escaping me, though. I'm pretty sure I mentioned it here, or somewhere, at least written it down. So, and I can also just leave a link to uh, that video where I talked about this movie. Um, I really enjoyed it, and it's nice to have this in 4K. Um, Universal seems to be a company that does their best to make sure... Uh, that 4K quality is uh, as good as it can be, so that's always good. Um, all right, there you go. Um, and yeah, um, so there's that. So now I have some Criterion films I've gotten the last month for their 50% uh, off sale at Barnes & Noble, and... The first movie I got, which I later found out later on in the month, they are the announced it for a 4K version, which was a bit kind of a, of course, moment for me. Um, but it's uh, dazed and confused. It's been a long time since I've 
seen this and I thought, might as well get it. And of course, around the time I finally do get it, they announced the 4K version will be out in January. Now, I don't know if I will get the 4K version of this. Um, though, uh, I do have, there are people I know who do enjoy this movie. So if I do decide to upgrade, I will at least, you know, sort of like 8 Mile, if I ever decide to get rid of one of those. Uh, or if I do get the other Steelbook version with the notes and such. I know people who will probably uh, like that. And so, if anything, I'd probably give it to somebody, this to someone. Um, but for now, I, I'm happy with this. And if I never get it, like, because the thing is, I, I for an upgrade, you know, with 8 Mile, you know, for me, I was like, I, if I, it's a movie I really enjoy, like 8 Mile, I don't really have a complete problem with upgrading to 4K, regardless if there's anything major in this new, in the special features, which there isn't. I mean, at least they continue the special features from the previous Blu-rays, which is always good. But still, at the same time, it's always a kind of a bummer when every so often they have an upgrade of sorts. They don't offer anything brand new. They don't interview people involved in the film for any kind of new extra or whatever. Um, and I don't know. If for that film, I think they could have. But this, this is such a cult classic. Um, and this is the 35th anniversary version. Um came out in 1993. Um, I believe this was, like, you know, for the 35th anniversary of the bicentennial director. Yeah, this is the 35th anniversary of the film, like, in terms of, like, the graduation of sorts, when they, like, graduate, the class graduated, so that's why it's the 35th anniversary of the bicentennial version of, <laughs> of this film, which is pretty uh, cool and funny. Um, being the 30th anniversary next year, I would hope they also have, like, another extra or two that's brand new. That's just, uh, for this, uh, set, you know, for the 4K set. But, uh, Night of the Living Dead, they didn't do so. Um, and also they kind of have the normal kind of Criterion Blu-ray stuff. It's not this. It's not like a digi book, which I like this. I think this is cool. Um, but this is a, an excellent film. Um, again, of course, it I, I, I get it. And not long after they announce their 4K and Blu-ray releases for uh, January, so for next year. And of course, this is one of them. But um, if I ever do decide to just get that and then give this to somebody else i'll probably do so uh like in july when they have their uh 50 off sale again um or if criterion's website themselves maybe themselves have some sort of 50 percent off um sale which i know they do so like a flash sale but usually it's never a really a good time to get anything from me but uh, um who knows whatever it, it, it could it could be uh, it could happen on some time where it's uh, not in the very middle of the month um, yeah I'll just say that it's like if they had it near the beginning or closer to the end that would be better but you know I guess it is what it is and I hope they do uh, have a 50% uh, off sale even prior to July with their Barnes & Noble thing, uh, deal that they've got. Um, yeah. Um, and another Richard Linklater film, that's from Richard Linklater. Um, I never got this on Blu-ray, but I have seen it before. And it is uh, Boyhood, you know, uh, Mason growing up from like, you know, like the early 2000s all the way up to like the 2010s. 
filmed over the course of, a, of 10 years and they have the same people in the film where every every year they would have like a dedicated time uh basically set we're gonna film some more scenes and uh film scenes of the kids on their own interacting with their friends or interacting with their parents and parents are not together like divorce or whatever um and so yeah it's this is a very good film i enjoy it i think it's an excellent movie um really unique in how it's made not too many films would really uh go about you know making a film for this long and to have all the same people usually they would have like like maybe the parents would be the be there but then like for the kids like for a certain age uh, of their life you have like one uh, actor actress show actor actress and then you know as they get a little older like around their uh, tweens and teens early teens have somebody but then if they want at the very end of their teenage years like going to college like graduating high school if they like if the person would actually be early to mid like the early teens like if they're still too young you know they'll then go and cast somebody else so the fact that they cast they cast these two people um uh lr coltrane and laura laurie the link later but i know i just butchered uh, her name but Richard Linklater's daughter, the fact that they uh, uh, kept them throughout the whole pro filming process, is, uh, you know, uh, or, or specifically uh, Richard Linklater did, that's really amazing. And you know, every so often, like he had a map outline of what he would want from beginning to end, but they would sort of like, every so often, depending on what the time of year it is, like period of time, be yeah, that 2008 campaign or whatever. You like write something specifically for uh, that that time, and it's really interesting and it's really cool. Just to, just how different and unique this kind of uh, film is, you know. Uh, and yeah, I I enjoyed it. I never had it before for whatever reason, but I have it now, and I enjoyed watching it and as well as the various special features of behind the scenes it's really it's a very good film i think and the last film i got from the criterion sale is uh malcolm x um yeah this is a spike lee film you know uh, denzel washington has malcolm x a lot of people are like, he should have won the Academy Award. And I'm like, yeah. Al Pacino's win for Scent of a Woman was clearly a, we messed up and sorry, here you go. It's your turn to win Academy Award. And, and for me, it's like, you know, it's between Denzel Washington and Robert Downey Jr. for Chaplin. I know there are people who aren't fond of the film Chaplin because of how many uh, inaccuracies it is. But, you know, as a film... It's very good, and plus Robert Downey Jr.'s performance is astounding as Charlie General. But so is Denzel Washington's in um, uh, Malcolm X. It's truly an excellent film. It's also been it's the thirtieth anniversary of this film, so that's pretty cool. Um, and also um, Unforgiven uh, with Clint Eastwood. I think all of those three are the top three uh, for best actor and I can't always tell who I like the absolute best I've often gone back to Robert Downey Jr. just because I just I don't know I'm, I just find uh, his performance to be truly uh, amazing especially when they reenact the some of the moments from his, some of his films it's just amazing but Denzel Washington is excellent in Malcolm X too both of them are truly deserving of the Academy Award as is Eastwood but Pacino winning, it's clear they felt like, you know, they should have given this to him, that Oscar to him. 
at least a time or two beforehand. And they're like, well, we're trying to make up for not giving you uh, an Academy Award, which unlike with uh, Peter O'Toole, who talked about last time with Lord of Arabia, you know, he did not um, receive an Academy Award um, ever outside of like an honorary Oscar, but that doesn't make him an Academy Award winner. You know, he has two Oscars. You know, he would win later on for Training Day, which is a big thing in and of itself of how, like, you know, he didn't exactly, he wasn't necessarily the best of that year, but because he was, uh, didn't win prior for, like, either this film or The Hurricane for Best Actor, and Russell Crowe had just won prior, the year prior for Gladiator, it's like they didn't have a, any real uh, need to give Crow an Academy Award. So he won for that film rather than this or the Hurricane. But, you know, either the, this or that, or uh, the Hurricane, were, were, were more deserving of the Academy Award than Training Day. And not to say he's bad in Training Day, but he, he just, you know, went up against like Russell Crowe for A Beautiful Mind. Yeah, uh, Crow gave the better performance, but it is what it is, I guess. You know, they make up, they make mistakes. They want to try and uh, uh, give awards to those who they've, I guess, like they've wronged in the past of not giving an uh, Oscar to. So, two thousand two went to him, whereas instead of it going to you know, either him or Robert Downey Jr., perhaps Clint Eastwood for Best Actor, it went to Al Pacino because they uh, didn't give it to him for, like, The Godfather or Godfather 2 or Serpico or uh, even acknowledge his performance. They didn't acknowledge his performance in Scarface, though that film was pretty controversial, so I guess that's why that film was omitted entirely. Um, but this is an excellent film really good um of course it's very long uh it's 201 minutes uh, it's in color and black and white and um yeah a lot of excellent extras on here so very good film uh, i could continue to talk about it a lot but yeah uh, and here's one i actually haven't watched yet which and I say it's very bad, but I don't know. I, I'm kind of sort of hesitant about doing so, but it's The Munsters, the Rob Zombie film. Um, I wasn't thrilled with the trailer, but I've heard from some people that this is not a bad film. Uh, like, there's so, there's some sort of, like, um, it, it, tribute to it it's kind of like uh, goofy and zany and such in various places and at times seems to be like appropriate to like the monsters but i've heard from others it isn't like uh i've heard um uh daniel robach who plays uh grandpa or or as it says here uh the count um like his uh, his performance is excellent as Grandpa Munster, and uh, from the trailers and everything, I've seen, I, it seems so. It seems like he's very you know, it's like he is honoring Al Lewis, but also doing his own thing. Where uh, Jeffrey Daniel Phillips, I guess, doesn't seem to be doing uh, something similar. But I mean, Fred Gwynn is hard to top. But still, I mean, it's one of those things that's be good to be both do your own interpretation, but uh, also do it a little tribute at the same time to the original person who was best known for it. Again, I have not seen this film, but I've heard some spoiler stuff or spoiler free stuff because uh, if I want to watch it, I want to watch it. And, you know, I got it so... If I like it, I like it. And I'll probably discuss what I like about it. If I don't, I don't know. I, I might not talk about this film anymore if I, because I want to usually talk about stuff I like. And 
That's why I'm only mentioning this, because I got it uh, oh, a while ago. I actually probably should have uh, mentioned this in the previous one, but I just forgot, because some of the other stuff was pretty new, so, you know, kind of forgot it for a bit, but uh, just because I was going to watch it, but then I just I had other things to, you know, I was going to watch instead, and talk about other movies, so I kind of got distracted. If I do watch this, and I, and, and I enjoy parts of it, I will, enjoy, I will discuss what I like. If I don't like it, um, I don't know. <laughs> If I will, though, if there's enough stuff in it that I think it's like if I'm split on it, like I'm kind of like, I think it's a eh movie, maybe, and I'll just talk about what I like about it, and maybe make some comments about what I don't. Or perhaps what I say I don't like about it will be enough, and it's like, I guess if you've seen this too, you can just then gather what else I'm not fond of. Um, but, yeah, there's that. And, uh... The last bit of stuff is some more uh, um, cool stuff. Um, there's a 4K version of Casablanca. Talked about that film earlier in the year when I saw it on, you know, uh, <clears throat> oh, you know, uh, yeah, in the theater. You know, I talked about that. Um, And, you know, I also showed this, the 70th anniversary of the film. This is the 80th anniversary for 4K. It doesn't say so, but it came out this year. So, it's the 80th anniversary. Um, and this new one does not have... I have a rubber band on this to keep this together, because otherwise it'll just, like do that and that's not all that fun but you know that like the Lawrence of Arabia set this also has like a cool book um, and also has a poster which is nice I'm not gonna unfold that though because that'd be really big yeah whatever It's been a while since I even talked about this, so I can't recall if I did this last time. If not, there you go, and if so, well, you can see it again. There you go. I don't really have any place to put this on a wall or anything to put this in, so... It'll just stay in this box. And, uh, some coasters, which I have not opened because, I don't know, I just want to keep them, basically. It's like a collector's item thing. I'll just, like, never use them, but they'll be cool to just have in here. This has a three discs. This is a three disc set. Um, the seventieth anniversary one, and um, this does have something that um, now where did I put that? I was putting everything everywhere. neat video isn't it i'm just looking everywhere and <laughs> pretty unprepared for this part and here yeah it is yeah, yeah. editing is your friend so there you go so this has something that this does not have you know this is a uh, you know yeah. on this one you know there's three discs Blu-ray, two Blu-rays, and a DVD. Um, 
There you go. Um, the things it does not have are um, two documentaries that are on the second disc. Because um, disc one has so many of the blue uh, the extras already. Um, you, know, says, you must remember this, the Warner Brothers story. which is not on this, nor is the Brothers Warner or uh, Jack L. Warner, The Last Mogul. That is not on here. Um, that's only on the second disc of the 70th anniversary uh, Blu-ray, um, at least in this set. I don't know if the normal Blu-ray set, if they had two discs or not. They might have, I don't recall. So, because I never got that, I got this instead. Um, but the everything on the first disc, uh, on the blue normal Blu-ray, you get here. So, if you're not a big completist or anything, or have any major urging to, to or you're not upset if of the lack of a few extras, this is pretty good to get. You know, all the extras are on the Blu-ray, and um, the film still looks excellent. It looked excellent for the 4K transfer that they gave for the normal Blu-ray here. It still looks excellent here, and as well as the you know, well, 4K. Looks fine. So, that's good. You know, nice uh, little thing to go back to. I apologize for the real... Uh, bungling and having to edit some stuff out because, well, I knew I was going to talk about this and yet at the same time I, it didn't dawn on me until uh, I was doing this to be like, hey, I should probably get this just for some comparisons. Um, so, yeah, um, I don't know. Um, it's nice to have this available. In, in reach just for the two or the three extra bonuses that aren't on this disc set but um, those aren't some I will watch a lot I haven't watched a lot so I'm not all that upset about not having them there though I guess in terms of a completionist it would be nice to have them all on the one blu-ray disc but whatever it's not the worst thing in the world and so yeah it's fine for me um, to just sort of keep that in there. It's not like, you know, Lawrence of Arabia where all the extras on the on that exclusive gift 50th anniversary set where all the extras were on the 60th anniversary, like Blu-ray disc or like second Blu-ray disc with all the special features. Yeah, it's not... It's not exactly the same thing there, but you know what? It's whatever. It's a. This is not the worst. <laughs> it's not the worst thing ever. I'm fine with it. And I gotta get it to where it's like that. So, yeah. I know this doesn't look very uh, appealing and all, but I want it to stand up and everything, and so. Because otherwise, like, I'd have to have it on some sort of angle, and I, I don't have a way to do that, really. And also, I'm not sure I would want to. Um, but if I ever did that, uh, and there was a way to do so without making it feel like it's going to completely fall over, everything's going to just fall out of it, then sure. Head over there. So yeah, excellent film, great transfer. I'm happy with this. And now a Shout Factory uh, film. 
that I got, or Scream Factory, I guess I should say. I had wanted to get this through um, uh, uh, Shout Factory uh, before, but for whatever reason, I never got it, and it was never all that expensive. But, you know, as time went on, not I really wanted it, but also, you know, I kind of wanted the slip cover because it's one of those things where, you know, with uh, Shout Factory, Scream Factory, you can uh, flip the uh the inside and have a different cover and i thought that would be cool but because of a different poster stuff but what i really think about it i actually do like the normal poster art which is what i would have had it on for, flipped it over for the other thing and not that the uh shout factory scream factory cover of it didn't look bad because it didn't but i just kind of I don't know. I've always liked this cover anyway, just better. That, it, to me, it's just better. And the film I'm talking about, I got, is Black Christmas. One of my favorite horror films of all time. I really love this film, and I love how this film has, or this Christian has every single extra on all the previous DVD releases, and also the blu-ray releases prior to the you know uh screen factory version and um yeah this has a uh, olivia hussey geared uh doula doula geared doula delay i can't speak i guess at times uh, pronouncing names that's which is my cure delay yeah that's his name uh, Margot Kidder, John Saxon. Um, it's also uh, produced and directed by Bob Clark, who is best known for A Christmas Story, which also got a sequel this year, which I have not seen yet, and I'm, I don't know when I will, but well, who knows. Might be sometime in the near future. But... Yeah, uh, excellent film. I'm pretty sure I've talked about this before. So, yeah, I really love it. Um, and it's also something where all, every disc has the film. Because the uh, third disc, the second Blu-ray, has the um, uh, 2006 Critical Mass Cut, which actually is the version I have on... Uh, DVD, so that version is, was given like a, like a a better transfer, I, I guess. And yeah, I. It's really cool how every single disc of this has the film, and for the third disc, a different cut. But yeah, I really like how this is talked about. This is all discussed and talked about. And all the special features are amazing. Uh, a true masterpiece you know not just of horror but i think of just in general though i guess most people would consider it if a, a masterpiece or a classic would be specifically in horror but it's an excellent film regardless i think it's really good it has a lot of the you know a lot of uh, tropes combined into one film you know uh, a stranger is in the house and he's calling from inside the house you know and he's seeing the killer's pov and all this stuff, a lot of these uh, tropes that we see in so many other horror films or slasher films, you know, and uh, it's really uh, uh, fantastic. And it's one of those films where, you know, it's, uh, yeah, they, uh, uh, there really aren't many graphic, there's really only one graphic kill that you get, you see, and, um, if you haven't seen it, I'm not going to spoil it, but, you know, you might know who, who uh, from the cast, who that might be. <laughs> um, but, yeah, this is a, an excellent film. Um, I haven't seen in either remake, and I'm happy with not seeing it, though I've heard uh, more positive things about, uh, about the first remake of this than 
the second. The second one seems to be a complete rounding, like, skip it. Like, if you enjoy this film, don't even bother, because it's just bad. So, yeah, um, so there's that. And the last two things I got are connected. I got Aqua Teen Forever, Plantasm, which is the second film uh, that happened with Aqua Teen. Um, and this came with a poster. Come on. I mean, it's just the cover of it, but still. John Carpenter's thingamajig. So, yeah, I enjoy Aqua Teen. Uh, I enjoy... Space goes coast to coast, and part of the reason is of dropping things is why I didn't show all the uh, stuff from uh, you know uh, the, all five DVDs of Space Ghost Coast to Coast because as we all see, I've been dropping some stuff here and there unintentionally, of course. But when you have a lot to say to see here, and they're not. I don't have the most organized thing of putting and stacking things away here and there. Sometimes dropping things happens. Apologies for that, and uh, but eh, still in pretty decent condition, so that's always good. It's pretty good. Uh, I thought this film was fine. Um, I have the first film on DVD, um, and yeah. It's cool to see more Aqua Teen after all these years. I remember they were wanting to do a sequel to the film, but just never got to do so. Um, but, yeah, they got a new film. Uh, it's pretty fine. It's not excellent. I don't know if I would say it's better than the first film. Um, but for what it is, it's fine. You know, they did try to have an actual plot from beginning to end, and... For some people, they didn't like that. They didn't like the whole plot thing. And so I'm like, and I guess I could get that. Um, like, it would be kind of nice <laughs> if it was just sort of like Aqua Teen. And I guess the first film sort of had a plot, but I guess there was some more oddity things going on here and there that don't completely, you know, relate to the plot. There's still some of that randomness and oddity stuff going on here and there. Um... Not so much here. You know, usually whatever is going on pretty much has something to do with the plot. Even if it seems a bit random and out of nowhere, that does have something relevant to the overall plot of this film. And, uh, yeah. I might talk about this at some point. Um, yeah. Uh, good film, though. Uh, overall. And the last thing I want to get... Uh, talk about is the biggest thing and that is aqua teen hunger force the complete baffler meal collection this uh, says the complete collection um has all basically everything from aqua teen except with the exception of the episode boston but that was such a controversial episode and was never aired it leaked on the internet and apparently they're going to have it uh air on the uh on tv but uh, it's leakage to the internet um made their decision of never airing it uh cemented and as a result not everything is animated, if you've seen it. I have here and there, because it pops up every so often. Um, I had the first seven volumes of it. I never got anywhere after that for the show of like Aqua Unit Patrol Squad 1. I didn't get that, nor... And they didn't release Aqua Something You Know Whatever, Aqua TV Show Show, Aqua Teen Hunger Force Forever, which is the same thing as Aqua Teen Hunger Force. They just decided for the last... Uh, one, two, three, four seasons. Just to stop naming them. And just 
come up with different names. And so, and they also have Aqua Teen Hunger Force colon movie film for theaters for DVD. And, uh, yeah. This is really cool. Um, has all the episodes and all the stuff, information of what's special features, though. You have uh, the Aqua something, you know, whatever, Aqua TV show show, and Aqua Teen Hunger Force Forever. Since they were never on DVD, they didn't have any special features. Um, uh, but the uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force Cola movie film for theaters... It has the theatrical film and the deleted movie, as well as the second disc of so many special features. Um, um, and I've been going through them, and all the stuff that was released on DVD seems to be the exact same stuff. It's just they have different packaging, or the different uh, disc art, I should say, not packaging. Well, obviously, it is different packaging, though. I will say something about this. This is a very cool or very convenient but this just seems very cheap because look at that it's it's not attached to the this and also i gotta be careful when going through all the discs you know i gotta i'm as very i'm, a, I'm very careful with all of my stuff but yeah tomatoes egg and onion, lettuce, uh, cheese, and patty, and tomato, looks like buns and such, and pickles, and all that. So, yeah, this is just fairly cheap and kind of flimsy. Not happy with this. Um, um, I love the set in the sense that I love re-watching all these episodes. I love looking through all those special features again and, ha and having them all in one big thing. And this was in here, though I think it's fine to just put that in there too. Just kind of nice. So, yeah. And these are all DVDs, so they're not blu-ray or anything upgraded to that even though after the first yeah you know, after the first season back after the film everything was in like widescreen and more or less high definition since that was the way the world was going so i guess in a way there's discussions of how you know you don't really need to discuss or have any real upgrades for shows being transferred if they're like on analog or whatever such as a show like space Ghost coast to coast for instance there wouldn't be that big of a uh, noticeable difference of sound and picture quality um though it would be cool to see this all these in blu-ray you know, have that at least be an option you know but i have no problem overall with the quality given here it's just i wish the insides here of all that would weren't so cheap in the sense of how they're all held together and yeah it's just disappointing in that regard but i don't know this kind of does give me some hope though that maybe some other shows that either did not get a full-blown complete series box set like aqua Teen has Maybe some of these other shows will, you know, either they'll continue to finish out the individual runs for the uh, season set, or maybe they'll have full-blown complete series uh, sets. And if they do do that, like for Space Ghost, for instance, if they do that, they have like the eight seasons out on DVD. Um, I would hope they would actually make sure all this is better because it just looks cheap in my opinion uh, i could be in the minority of that and that's fine and all but that's just my opinion on that on this from re-watching the episodes and being as careful as i can to make sure that 
not only do I not scratch the discs and also put them in there properly as because they're also kind of the kind that's like here's one disc and there's another on top that's kind of annoying uh, you know, I've never been the biggest fan of that and I don't think many people have been either so that's another thing you know you know yeah baffler meal yeah I'm I am happy though that this does exist and I do hope this means maybe in the near future we shall get more stuff uh I don't believe I yeah there's nothing else though there might be something coming soon so if there is I guess I'll put that in here at the very end of the video um hello uh this is sort of a continuation from where the video had previously left off uh as I mentioned you know I'm like I believe I had something coming in the mail and I did but I also recalled that there were some movies I actually did not <clears throat> uh, talk about um, that I also got uh, uh, since the last like video of, of this kind that I uh, did not uh, talk about so I'll talk about those first before I get to the thing I just got today um, the first is I got all um, five Die Hard movies. Um, and on this uh, set, the fourth movie is actually... The, has the unrated uh, version, which is pretty much the R-rated version. I have no clue why they never had it on Blu-ray before. Though, well, they did. I guess I'll get into that a little bit. Um, there's another set of uh, all these films prior to this one which all had like the discs had something similar to this artwork so that's pretty cool but of course they have to be fairly cheap and with the artwork these days and there you go um, yeah. I personally all uh, don't really see this as a Christmas film first one um, for me a big thing for Christmas movies is they always they, like the family should have dinner that's a big thing you know and since most Christmas films don't actually really take place on Christmas you know usually it's before maybe it's like the days before or weeks or whatever maybe even the day before Christmas you know some do have it on Christmas or at least part of it takes place on Christmas, so that's nice. But, you know, for the majority of films that are not on Christmas Day, um, you know, and just because a film is takes place during Christmas time, I don't know if we have to be labeling that a Christmas movie because then you're opening up a wide floodgate and then there will always be people who will be putting movies that aren't Christmas films on a list of Christmas movies and that will be a big debate. I'm like, well, it does have this and this and that. But I'm like, well, a big thing about Christmas should always be family. That should be a part of it. And so many Christmas films uh, for a long time now haven't really had family as a main focus. It's usually like it, people, like it takes place during Christmas, but then this sentiment isn't necessarily about family. And I guess in a way you could say that because, you know, he's he and his wife are separated and all that but you never see them ever get together like as a family you see the two reconcile basically at the end so, spoiler if you've never seen die hard but that happens uh, but you never get to see a scene where they're home with their children uh, that well that definitely takes off points for me if it's a christmas film or not and that's a huge one for me that's a major thing with family and seeing family together and we never see the entire family together in this film um and you never really see, i don't know i 
yeah, it's like you don't really get to see that in some of the sequels. I know in that like the fifth one, you know, like both the son and daughter are in that film, but you know, of course, he's divorced by that point, so uh, uh, his wife is no longer in the picture. Um, plus, part of the reason I got this is also because you know didn't have these all on blu-ray before and also bruce willis has as we all know has taken a step back from acting so i know people say he's retired um though i think it's interesting how they phrased it as you know taking a step back and you know what he may be permanently retired and will never act again in his life but with the you know the condition that he has um it has been i've read and seen people who are very specialized in that field of you know about talking about this condition it is treatable you can do things to like help improve and strengthen memory and all that good stuff so it could be maybe in some years you know if he's you know uh, doing these uh, exercises and all these things to help his memory uh, and you know, being able to, you know, communicate properly and well, any of the things that he might have that goes on with the symptom, with the symptoms of the condition that he's got, um, any or all that, you know, I would assume he would be, you know, making sure he's able to get better and be as productive as he can, you know, for himself and his family, um, but maybe Bruce Willis will never act again. That is always a possibility. But the fact that they, his family said he's taking a step back from acting is always in, was interesting to me. But I guess we'll see in a few years whether he will ever uh, come back to acting or not. So uh, let's hope he gets better. You know, I would like to see him in more stuff, but I would also, you know, want him to be, you know, actually fine and all right you know i don't want him to just do stuff just to see him and stuff you know that's you know someone's health is more important than you know making movies so hope all is well with him um, and the other thing i got is uh, the steel book of reservoir dogs you know that's from lion's gate so that's pretty cool in the sense of a steel book and comparing it to, I guess, American Psychos here would be a good comparison. Uh, I have the past uh, releases of the film of Reservoir Dogs here. But yeah, Lion's Gate has these, and you know, as I showed before. Here's American Psychos. He's got the blood on his face. There is the back. And there you go. Um, with this, you know, the ear that comes off, and you know, this is a famous scene in the film. Um, now, um, something that is a big bummer with this is the fact that it, the special features is pretty light, and that is a disappointment, I think, and it's not just for the Steelbook, it's just for the 4K in general. You know, you get deleted scenes, the featurette of playing it fast and loose, as well as something like, uh, profiling the, profiling the Reservoir Dogs, which is fine but the fact that you know even the previous blu-ray release the normal blu-ray of the 15th anniversary even though it came out in uh, 2008 i believe even though this isn't saying anything maybe the dvd has it but i have that too but yeah this has uh, uh 
the Pulp Factoids viewer insider information about Reservoir Dogs and its source of information. Basically, throughout the film, you'll see these pop-ups come up here and there that will be telling you some interesting facts and about the movie and the making of it and all that good stuff. Um, and then it has playing a fast and loose like a documentary, I guess, of the featurette of uh, Reservoir Dogs. Um, and of course, you know, that Blu-ray is also in the Tarantino 20th anniversary or yeah, uh, 20 years of filmmaking uh, Blu-ray set that I've got. Um, so this has something that this doesn't. And that's kind of a shame, I think. But also, I think one thing that puts the Blu-rays to shame, which it shouldn't, that Blu-ray should have way more stuff, is that the DVDs... The 15th anniversary DVD, I got that also, not just the Blu-ray, but also the uh, 10th anniversary, uh, has a bunch of stuff, you know, like the Blu-ray, it has, the first Blu-ray has the Pulp Factoids viewer thing, um, playing a Fast and Loose documentary, and uh, profiling the Reservoir Dogs featurette, and there's a tipping guy, you know, proper tech, uh, tipping etiquette of Reservoir Dog style, deleted scenes. Now, the Blu-ray doesn't say that, but I, the normal one, I believe they do have the deleted scenes. Yeah, they just didn't add, have that, though, if, the, if it is. Um, has some classic interviews with Quentin Tarantino and others. K. Billy sounds of the 70s and more, such as, like, these action figures that they had of the, of the Reservoir Dogs and some other stuff. Um, yeah, so the DVD has more stuff than the Blu-ray, which is a shame. And then the, uh, the this uh, 10th anniversary set has uh, deleted scenes, you know, uh, new interviews with Quentin Tarantino, Lauren Spender, Tim Roth, Chris Penn, Michael Madsen, Eddie Bunker, Chris, Kirk Baltz, and more. Tribute to Lawrence Tierney. Reservoir Dogs Director's Tribute. Uh, class of 19 of 92 a retrospective look of the indie uh, films and filmmakers the 92 Sundance Film Festival and Reservoir Dogs were, was introduced small dogs you know like action figures which is actually there so uh, now that was on here not here there though they do have something so maybe that was here I, they don't list it on the 15th anniversary DVD, so apologies for not 100% knowing, but Film Noir Web, writers and directors behind the legacy of this classic genre, uh, commentary of the cast and crew and critics, which I think the Blu-ray might have it, but I can't recall. Again, it's been a while since I've actually even listened to the, docu uh, the commentary, honestly. On location with the, these movie and uh, basically finding all the places they shot the film at and uh, Reservoir Dog Style Guide and K. Billy Interactive Radio which I believe is the same thing here and poster gallery and trailer but yeah the Reservoir Dogs Blu-ray or the DVDs um, if you've got these you have way more extras than what the Blu-rays have which is a complete shame, I think. You know, the Blu-ray discs should have way more. Uh, I mentioned before when I talked, uh, when I showcased American Psycho, how the original Blu-ray did not have the uh, uh, American Psycho from book to screen um, feature, special feature. You know, the normal Blu-ray. And this normal Blu-ray on this still doesn't, but it is included on the 4k disc the 4k blu-ray so this does have that uh where the original blu-ray and the blu-ray here it's omitted but with this you can see it now where if before if you have the dvd you can have it or you've got it otherwise no it's it's so weird you know as like upgrades of the sort happen 
you should be able to get everything and Lionsgate owns all the stuff all the special features I don't know what the point is with not including all this stuff from the DVDs onto the Blu-rays maybe it has something to do with how the fact that you know Chris Penn and Eddie Bunker passed away and so since some of the interviews and stuff were kind of uh, integrated as opposed to being both individual they could then incorporate for some of the like the documentaries on here maybe because of that maybe their families didn't want uh their likeness or whatever uh in there beyond just being in the film and any deleted scenes they're in and all that stuff i i don't know can only speculate but even then it could be far off but it's just weird or if that's not the case you know, at least then that would be sort of understandable. But if that's not the case, and it's just fairly lazy that these two Blu-rays, uh, like sets and such, should have way more uh, bonus content on here as opposed to just the bare minimum of stuff of like deleted scenes and a documentary and a featurette. You know, what about some of the interviews and stuff on here? They'd be great Blu-ray extras, but, you know, whatever. Maybe uh, most people don't even care about that anymore. Though, if you're buying Blu-ray uh, DVD uh, these days, part of the reason you buy it is not only to just to have the uh, film or show and the best quality possible, but also uh, any special features there that's that's kind of a big thing that for most people and it's just unfortunate that for the 30th anniversary 4k uh edition of reservoir dogs it doesn't have that kind of treatment and it should um whether or not you love tarantino's work or you hate his work or you're indifferent like you like some of this stuff but others you're not fond of this movie is really where it all began for him and i don't know you should have as much stuff on there as possible you know pulp fiction from what i've seen about the 4k of that seems to have all the contents that the dvd and blu-ray had so i don't know what the excuse is for uh that although i know it's from a different company and all that owns Reservoir Dogs for the home video market and all, but I don't know. I mean, they'd want, I'm sure they would want to have people enjoy the Blu-ray and 4K the best they can, but I don't know. I, I don't know what the deal is with that, so, yeah. Then the thing that I, um, to finish this whole thing up, it all, uh, thing I got in the mail is, um... <clears throat> Better Call Saul, Season 6. Um, so now I have the entire uh, run of Better Call Saul on Blu-ray. I have Breaking Bad on DVD. I've got the Blu-ray DVD combo pack of El Camino. And then all these on Blu-ray now. I did see the um, complete series uh, set they had for uh, this on Blu-ray my opinion it looked pretty cheap it didn't look all that great and in terms of just the look and how it's just like this big like the aqua teen hunger force uh, dvd set i showed it's basically like that and that's just sad um originally that was actually like listed like over 200 bucks and i'm like to justify that price you would have to have not only the complete series of better call saul but also all of Breaking Bad and El Camino in order to justify that uh, price, honestly. You know, I, I might get, I, I'll, I, I'd love to get uh, Breaking Bad on Blu-ray, um, but obviously that wasn't in the <laughs> run for that time being because, well, I wanted to get this and some of the other stuff. Um, plus, November had a, a pretty big discount because of, you know, Black Friday, and but also just seemed to be like Black Friday month all November. Um, so, 
able to get quite a bit of stuff at a pretty decent price. And, um, yeah, I've been going through <laughs> all these uh, lately. Uh, I apologize for the length of this video, but, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I finally have uh, uh, Better Call Saul uh, uh, completed. You know, this has uh, some Blu-ray exclusives, so, like, if you got the DVD, there stuff that you won't get, like Series Adjourn, Saying Goodbye to Better Call Saul, Fear and Loathing in Omaha, The World of Gene Takovic, Deleted Scenes, and this is for like a, pretty much any release, Deleted Scenes, Gag Reel, Cast and Crew Commentaries on every episode, Wine and Roses, Behind the Scenes of Casa Goodman, American Greed, James McGill, which was something on that was released online that I saw. It was very funny. And then training videos. I love the, I love this series. Um, and now with it complete, um, someday I will watch all of them and I'll probably give an overall discussion of the each season of Breaking Bad, El Camino, and all the seasons of Better Call Saul. Really love this show and um, glad to be able to have it uh, completed now and uh, yeah I will um, I've got some uh, ideas for some future uh, videos in the near future uh, soon so uh, stay tuned for that apologies for the length of this it's like over an hour long um, but I hope this wasn't a complete waste of time. You know, a lot of people talk about stuff they've gotten, uh, and or have watched, uh, here, so. I'm doing the same, but I hope, uh, this was interesting. Um, I probably could have done this in a couple videos, but I'm like, I, I will be prolonging the whole thing, and I just want to try and get it all done in one go. And I hope this wasn't a complete slog. But it could be, so if it was, apologies. Um, then again, for some people, if it's a real slog, probably didn't even get to the end of this video. So if you did, uh, thank you. And uh, I hope all of you are doing well. Hope all of you will have a great weekend and a great day. And um, I'll see you all next time. Take care. Bye.